from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to introduce the next author. She is the author of the book Drama and Smile. Please welcome to the stage Ms. Raina Tulgemeyer. Everybody. How are you guys today? Woo. Um, another comment about where you're sitting. If you cannot see this drawing pad from where you're currently sitting, please come closer and get into the center of the room because that is going to be a really important part of my presentation today. Um, so yeah, while I'm giving my introduction, move yourselves closer to the center. I want everybody to be able to see the board. What? She's my biggest fan. Well, this is so convenient. Hi. Um, so my name is Raina Telgemeier, and I am a graphic novelist. And um, some people in this audience might know me best so far for a book called Smile. Um, <laughs> Smile is the true story of how, when I was in sixth grade, I was running one evening with my friends, tripped, fell, and knocked out my two front permanent teeth. And when you meet me in person, you can tell right away that the story has a happy ending. But if you're just reading the story, you might not know that the ending is going to be happy until you finish the book. So um, fortunately, it does have a happy ending. And I do have a full mouthful of regular looking teeth, although several of them are fake. Um, if you meet me later and want to ask me for a very close up view of my front teeth, you're welcome to do so. But know that I have a lot of cavities and fillings in the backs of my teeth, so you'll see all of my silver when I show you my fronts. So um, Smile came out two and a half years ago, and since then it's sort of become this whirlwind force in my life. And that's really fascinating because Smile is based on a time in my life that was really kind of weird and tumultuous, and I was not someone who felt good about myself as a 12-year-old kid missing her two front teeth. And if someone had told me then that 20 years later I would write a story about this experience and it would keep me from feeling as lonely as I had then, I would have been very comforted by that. And since then I've met a lot of people who have had similar experiences, whether it's with their teeth or with something about their face or even an arm or a finger. I'm sure everybody here has had some sort of traumatic experience and it has affected the way that you felt about yourself. And sometimes those things can be internal, sometimes they're external, but they all affect us in similar ways. And this is something that we all have in common. And so Smile managed to bring a lot of people a lot closer to me. And I've heard lots of other people's experiences and it makes me feel so wonderful about everything. So that's Smile. And uh, a lot of people ask me, are you gonna write a sequel to Smile? We wanna know what happens next. Can you please tell us what happens after the last page is turned? And in my opinion, those stories are a little less interesting because they have nothing to do with my teeth. My teeth are fine now. There's, there's no more story there. So you've kind of read the end of that story. But I do have other stories from my life that I think are interesting and worth telling. And with Drama, which is my new book, I decided to take some of my own experiences and turn them into a fictionalized story about a character who is not me. So Drama is the untrue story of a seventh grader named Callie who has purple hair and is in love with the theater. Do I have any drama or theater people here in the house today? <laughs> Excellent. Well, even those of you that are not theater people, um, Callie is not a performer. She's not somebody who is necessarily comfortable being up in front of a group of people. And I was always kind of a shy kid, so things like giving book reports in school or having to make oral presentations always freaked me out. Uh, I used to be very terrified by having a lot of people looking at me all at the same time. Obviously, I've gotten over that, but Callie is still kind of there. She's not, she doesn't have stage fright, but the thing about Callie is she has a traumatically horrible singing voice. <laughs> she can sort of shatter glass with her voice, and she knows that about herself. So her entry point into the theater is through the set. So she designs sets for her school plays. She is part of the stage crew. She is a group of kids, she's part of the group of kids who is behind the scenes making things happen. And if you are in the theater, you know the people backstage are of utmost importance. Even something like today, we have Andrew the tech guy. Let's give him a huge hand. 
he had to make sure my microphone was working. And let me tell you how important that is. If I didn't have a microphone on, I'd be like, come closer to the stage. Um, so, so tech is super important. And I wanted to give sort of a spotlight to the people who do those sorts of things to make entertainment happen. So that's drama. But drama is also about, you guessed it, drama. <laughs> and by that, I mean the kind of drama that happens between people. So um, Callie meets these two twin boys. Their names are Justin and Jesse. And um, she gets to know them a little bit better. And she starts to fall in love with one of them. They're twin brothers, by the way. And uh, she finds out that one is gay. And she, she has questions about the other brother. Is he gay? Is he not gay? Is she allowed to fall in love with him? Should she maybe keep her distance? At the end of the day, she does not care because she is really good friends with these two boys. And here's the connection to my own life. In high school, I had two very good twin friends named Jake and Jeff, and they're still a huge part of my life. And so the friendship there, the friendship between these three people, myself and my two friends, was absolutely an inspiration for the characters in drama. So in that way, Callie kind of is like me. She is kind of learning about stuff that she hasn't experienced before. She's, she's getting to know friends. They're getting to know themselves. She's getting to know herself. And um, of course, the show must go on. So amongst all of these happenings, everybody has to put on a show together. And they have to make it work. And they all have to you know, save the day and stuff. So um, it's been really fun. The book has only been out for three weeks, but I'm finally starting to meet kids who have read it. And it's super gratifying as an author to spend you know, two years of your life at your desk working every single day on a project. In my case, I have to write it, then I have to draw it, and then I don't do the colors myself, but I have to work with the colorist and produce the book. So that's a huge labor of love. And at the end of the day, you're presented with a book. And it's like your whole life is in a book. So I'm, I'm so overjoyed that drama is finally out and you guys now get to read the story. Um, and as for what's coming next for me, I guess people always want to know. Remember how I said I was never going to write a sequel to Smile? Well, maybe I lied, and maybe I didn't lie, but uh, my next book is actually going to be a companion book to Smile. So I am going to go back to telling a story about my family. This one is going to focus on my relationship between my, me and my sister. And uh, the two themes going through the book are going to be pets and road trips. So I don't know if anybody here has ever had a pet or been on a road trip, but um, I have two hands in the air, and I'm sure some of you probably do too when it comes to those subjects. So I just started, well, I just finished writing it actually, and uh, it has to be approved by my editor, and then I have to draw it. So it's probably gonna be out in 2014, <laughs> because that's how long graphic novels take. I'm so sorry about that. I'm gonna try to make this one a little bit quicker than my last book. Um, I, I really love what I do, and to show you how much I love what I do, I would love to create a comic on stage in front of you guys right now. Does that seem like an okay idea? Yeah. Well, my specialty is taking things that have happened to me in my real life and making them into comic stories. And I would like to choose a member of the audience who has a ridiculous story to tell. Preferably, something very, very disgusting that has happened to you. Now, my example for this is that Smile was about the time that I tripped, fell, knocked out my two front permanent teeth, and had to spend four and a half years of my life going through braces, headgear, surgery, false teeth, uh, headgear, did I mention that one already, et cetera. Um, this is going to be a little shorter than that. It's not going to be 220 pages, but um, I'm going to try to do this in one page. And you've got your hand up, Emily, right? Okay, Emily, if you wouldn't mind going to the microphone over here, as briefly as you possibly can, summarize the most disgusting thing that's ever happened to you. And speak loudly so we can all hear you. Well, I had surgery a few years ago, and that's kind of gross. Yeah, what kind of surgery? Um, it was on my bladder. What? Yes. <laughs> and I had tubes. That's gross. Whoa. Okay, so... So you knew you were getting into this before it happened, right? Yes. I'm trying to decide whether we should tell a story about the before part or the after part. Do you think the, be the after part, like waking up from the surgery, might be like an interesting quick story that we could tell? Was. OK, cool. Well, the first thing I want to do, stay where you are, is I would like to summarize your experience in a list format. And that means you're going to tell me things as they happened. 
So what's the first thing you'd like to show in this story that we're going to do together? Um, waking up, I guess. Waking up, you guess. Okay, so where did you wake up? Were you in a hospital bed? Yes. Okay, so number one, I'm going to write Emily wakes up in hospital bed. Okay, so then what was the next thing that happened? I had a bunch of tubes and I saw that on stuff. You had a, you noticed a bunch of tubes were sticking out of you. Okay, yes. so number two, noticed tubes <laughs> sticking out. <laughs> how many how many tubes were we talking? Three. Four yeah, three. Three? Okay, let's say three. Um, all right, so you noticed were you groggy when this happened? Very. Okay. So let's post a little groggy note next to number one here. Little star. Okay, and then what happened? I noticed I couldn't feel my legs. She noticed she could not feel her legs. Okay, this is getting interesting. Noticed, it's just about Emily noticing stuff. Noticed she could not feel legs. Let's put a dot, dot, dot there, because things are <laughs> Maybe about to get kind of interesting? Is that right? Okay, number four. What was the next thing that happened to you? Freak attack. Freak attack. So what does that encompass? Did you scream? Did you cry? Did you? I tried to ninja chop, chop everyone. You tr This is getting good, you guys. <laughs> she tried to ninja chop everyone. Okay, so let's say freak out. And then another list here, ninja chopping. <laughs> what else? Um, a lot of questions were asked. Uh, questions from you or questions from other people? Yeah. Okay, so ninja chopping and question asking. <laughs> um, anything else I need to know about? Um, I think that covers it. That covers it, okay. So, and then what happened? Um, I got my questions answered. <laughs> <laughs> what was the most important question that you asked and was answered? What happened? What happened? So they didn't tell you beforehand what was going to happen? Well, they explained part of it, but waking up when all that stuff. Right. They didn't explain it that well. Okay, so they told you what happened. What came next? I probably fell back asleep. She fell back asleep. Okay. <laughs> fell back asleep. So is that where the story ends, or, or is there any sort of conclusion that you can draw from, from this whole experience, or how long were you in the hospital for? 12 days. What? What? So the, it ended with you fell back asleep, <laughs> and then 12 days later. Is that... <laughs> so, okay, during these 12 days, were you allowed to eat? Were you allowed to go to the bathroom? Were you? Well, I went to the bathroom in my bags, so. Oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Wait, I have to put that, okay. So, so let's, another star. Bags for bathroom. We're just gonna use the word bathroom here so it doesn't get too disgusting. Okay. And then 12 days of this. Yes. Tw okay. 12 days, 12 crazy nights. Okay. Uh, so then you went home? I went. Yes, I did. Yes, it was snowing. It was snowing? Yes, it okay. was. We, it, we had snow in October last year. Wow. Yes. <laughs> okay, so did anything amazing happen when you got home, or was it just like, that's the end of the story? We had Halloween. Halloween! Okay, oh, this was last year. Yes. When, when it snowed, like, right around Halloween time. That was the Occupy yes. Wall Street time, too, if I recall. <laughs> I was not in the country when that happened, so I was like watching it on French television, and I was like, what do they say? Oh, Occupy, okay, I see. Oh, Snow, I get it. Um, okay, so then it's, were you allowed to eat candy on Halloween? Yes, a okay. little bit. Let's put this down here. Halloween and candy. What did you dress up for as Halloween last year? A uh, hippie. A hippie, okay. It would have been funnier if you were like a bladder or something. <laughs> Uh, so let's just say Emily was a hippie for Halloween. And everything's been fine since? 
Yes, thankfully. Well, that is a great ending to your story. So let's thank Emily first <laughs> for being brave enough to talk about her bladder in front of a group of several hundred people. Thank you, Emily. I, I don't think I'm, I'm ready to talk about my bladder in front of you guys, so I just, I will refrain. Um, okay, so now what I usually, this is actually how I tend to make stories, is I sort of think of a list of events. It's like a sequence of events, and I have to figure out what's the most interesting thing that's happening here, which things do I want to show, because comics is a visual medium. You're not just telling a story, you're showing a person a story too. And I like to try and put as much emphasis on what's funny about this story. So people freaking out about stuff is like my number one thing. Um, so normally what I'll do, I'll just make a list. It's like a brainstorming session. I am just trying to get all of my thoughts out of my head and onto paper. And once I have a list, which you could also call an outline, I start to sort of break it down into more manageable chunks. And sometimes that means crossing things out. Sometimes that means combining things. And um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my list and I'm gonna circle what I think is the most important. So, Emily wakes up, I'm just gonna review. Emily wakes up, groggy in her hospital bed, notices tubes are sticking out of her. There are three of them. She knows she cannot feel her legs. She freaked out, which included ninja chopping and asking questions such as what happened. She fell back asleep. And then she had to use bags for bathroom adventures for the next seven days. And 12 days later, it was Halloween. She went home, she got to eat candy, and she was a hippie. <laughs> so let's see, is there anything that I could probably combine together? So I think number four and five definitely can be sort of summarized in one panel. Um, she fell back asleep. Okay, I think this is important. We have to establish the scene. So we need to see her waking up groggy in her hospital bed. And maybe we can show the tubes so we don't have to have her saying, there were tubes sticking out of me. Because it's obvious, because we're gonna show that. So we can combine these two moments into one, two and three. She'll notice the tubes while she says that she can also not feel her legs. I have three things circled now. Um, the fact that you fell back asleep is interesting when you tell it, but I think for the sake of the story, we can probably take that one out of the list. And the bags for bathrooms is pretty good, so I'm gonna put a circle around that. And then let's sort of cut to, well, I know, I know that right now it says 12 days, um, and it's got a number next to it, but I'm gonna make a caption that just says 12 days later, so that it's kind of like obvious that time has passed, and captions are a great way to do that. And maybe I'll just have you coming out of the hospital like dressed as a hippie, how about that? <laughs> so I can sort of show this whole moment as one, eight, nine, and 10. So then I'll look at my list and I've got one, two, three, four, five things circled, and that tells me I'm going to need five panels when I draw my comic, because I have five moments to show. And I am so happy to see that these are the post-it note kind of uh, things. So I'm gonna stick that right there for, no, no I'm not. I'm gonna stick it somewhere that I can see it. Sorry guys, because <laughs> I need to draw the comic. So I'm gonna put it right here. Apologies for those of you that can't follow along with the list, but take my word for it. All right, so I've got five circles. And like I said, five circles is gonna correspond to five panels. So I'm gonna take this whole page and use it as my template. And drawing that like so. So I need to figure out how to make my panels. Which ones are gonna be big, which ones are gonna be small. Um, I'm gonna do one and two up here at the top and just divide them equally in half. My third moment is that Emily is freaking out and because freaking out is so much fun to draw, I'm gonna make that a big moment and then I'm gonna make another small moment here for the fact that her bathroom trips have to correspond with a bag for the next few days. And then I'm gonna do another big panel at the bottom for five. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five. Now comes the fun part, which is the actual drawing and writing of the comic. So I'm taking my list as inspiration, and now I'm gonna draw. And one thing you'll notice is I'm not gonna spend very much time on my drawings here. Um, when I write my comics, this is exactly the format that I use. It's called thumbnailing. And that just means I am doing very fast and sketchy drawings 
just to sort of place the characters there and whatever they're going to be saying is going to be written into a word balloon next to them. When I do this again for my books, I would spend much more time on the artwork. I would use a nice piece of paper, nice pencils, nice ink, all of that stuff, and that would be my finished artwork. But this is just a thumbnail, so I'm not going to spend too much time on the art. The first thing I need to draw is Emily waking up in her hospital bed groggy. So, Emily, with some half-closed eyes, she's going to be waking up. Emily has bangs, so I'm going to draw those in like that. Did you have braces when this happened too? Okay. Well, she's wearing giant earrings right now, so I think it'll be funny to make her wearing giant earrings in the comic, even though I know for a fact that when you have surgery, you are not allowed to wear earrings. And she's got some freckles, so I'll draw those in too. So the hospital bed is just gonna be like your basic hospital bed, like so. Here's her feet. <laughs> um, here's a little pillow behind her. I assume that like your family was around there too, right? So okay, let's let's put like mom. Well, I got mom right here. This is great. Mom's hair goes like that. Maybe mom's happy that she's just woken up. And okay, mom's hair. Mom's also got big earrings on, so this is this is really important when you're trying to make a character look a little like themselves. Um, so um, to show that she's just woke. Oh right, sorry, we're in a hospital, so I have to put things like an IV drip and maybe a little tube like that coming down. Emily's bed. So I'm gonna put a sound effect above her head that says blink, blink, to show that she is just waking up. So blink, blink. And then maybe a little bit of uh, lines around her eyes to show what's going on. Okay, so there's panel one. Emily waking up in her hospital bed groggy. The next thing that happens is that she noticed there are tubes sticking out of kind of this area, right? Okay, and that she can't feel her legs. So I'm gonna have her sitting up in bed, suddenly a little bit more alert than she was. <laughs> and Maybe uh, she sort of like throws the blanket off of her body like that. And she notices for the first time uh, hospital gowns or whatever they are, I don't know. Uh, so that there are some tubes sticking out of her gown like so. So a little motion line next to her arm to show that she has just thrown the blanket off. So she sees the tubes and she's going to say, wait, dot, 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 I can't feel my legs, dot, dot, dot. Again, dot, dot, dots are good because they sort of add tension to a scene. Although my editor will tell me that I use too many ellipses and that I need to cut down on it, but I'm like, this is comics. You have to have ellipses all over the place. They're important. A few little dots to show that this is indeed a hospital gown. Okay, so the next panel, what I have written down here is freak out, ninja chopping, asking questions, like what happened? So this is my opportunity to really have fun with this comic and show Emily just like freaking out completely. Um, so, so <laughs> I guess I have my, this is answered for me right here. What happened? That's what she's gonna be saying. So let's make that really big. What happened? And comics are great because you can, you can use a word balloon that looks like this to show somebody talking normally, but you can also draw like a big burst to show them sort of screaming something. So the visual language of comics, again, it's awesome. So she is ninja chopping. What does a ninja chop look like? That, that, that. Okay, I wanna show more than just one that. So I'm gonna draw a bunch of arms kind of going crazy. Um, so she's gonna be sort of squinting her eyes, screaming, so I'll draw her tongue sticking out of her face like that. <laughs> so here's one of her hands chopping the air. <laughs> and then another hand up here getting ready to chop. I'm 
sure this is not exactly how it went, but who cares? This is a fun story. And then I'll draw her arm sort of several times in the air like this to show that it's in motion. And then this one can be kind of coming down like that over here. <laughs> yeah, I think I probably would have reacted exactly the same way. Uh, so she's screaming, what happened? And she's ninja chopping. And, and maybe mom doesn't look like this anymore, so I'll draw mom over here again. Uh, <laughs> she's, she's a little unsure of what she's supposed to say at this moment in time. So there's the hospital bed again, that little bar thing. I'm gonna have your, your mom with yet another ellipses next to her head because she's not sure what to say. So here's a word balloon with just a simple dot, dot, dot in it. <laughs> That's a good way to show somebody pausing or not knowing what to say. Okay, so the next thing is that she, it just says bags for bathroom. <laughs> I am trying to figure out how to draw this. You can, ex do you want to use the microphone and explain it? Because I, I may not draw it exactly as it looked. Well, she had to wear bags that came from here and they were attached to her leg. Oh, so okay. So you could almost have a, you know, you could, it, the best way to show it would be that, you know, it was. I can show her leg. On a leg with, with a little a, bag, with a bag on, on it. So. Well, okay, let's, let's show that. And we'll have an off panel word balloon. Thank you, mom, for explaining. Um, <laughs> and mom will be the one explaining. So, so mom will say, <laughs> you have a bladder bag attached to your leg? Does that sound sufficient? Okay. You, oh, that's even better. Great. You have a pee bag. Boy, 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 boy. This is some comic. Attached to your leg. And I will draw that coming from the right-hand side because so far we've established that Emily is here and mom is here. So if the word balloon's coming from that side of the panel, that would mean that mom is the one saying it. I do not know what this looks like. I'm just gonna make it up. So here's a leg uh, with a little thing on it and a little bag attached to it. And let's put some, let's put some liquid in that bag, huh? And then a little, a little tube coming from the bag. Okay, sure. <laughs> this is the strangest story I have ever drawn. <laughs> I'll put an arrow pointing to it, just so that we all know what's going on. I do not have a yellow marker up here. I am very sorry to report. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Stand by. Orange, no. <laughs> no, we don't want to go there. OK, so um, <laughs> what a great comic. Uh, the last thing I have is it says 12 days, Halloween and candy, and Emily was a hippie for Halloween. So I'm going to draw. In the background, oh no, sorry, I'm gonna draw a caption that says, 12 days later. And a caption just means some words that are inside of a box. Usually that's up at the top of a panel like that. 12 days later, and just for like, you know, to know what's going on here, I'm going to make a very boring looking building that says, hospital. <laughs> <laughs> so that we know where it is that they are coming from. And then I'm gonna have Emily and her mom walking away from the hospital. So mom is happy again. Because moms are, moms are good at being happy about stuff like their kids getting discharged after bladder surgery. Moms usually have purses. I always draw a mom with a purse. No matter whose mom she is, she's always got a purse. So she's walking away. You notice I put a little dotted line to show that they have just come from the hospital. So there's mom walking away. She's in a good mood, still wearing her earrings. Um, and Emily is very, very happy, <laughs> like deliriously happy. And uh, how about a hippie headband for your, your hair? How about a uh, big earring, because that's what you wear? How about like a fringe vest? Hippie style. How about some flowers for flower power? <laughs> and I'll put a peace sign on the other side of the fringe vest. Some big bell bottoms. So Emily is going to have a little jack-o'-lantern shaped candy thing in her hand. 
like so. Telling the story through pictures. And then what should Emily be saying? Something about like, oh, I can't wait to go trick or treating or something like that. Or I can't wait to eat candy or trying to tie it back to the bag. No more pee bag? <laughs> How about candy, not pee bags or something like that, okay. Candy, not pee bags. <laughs> <laughs> what a happy ending to the story. Thank you very much, Emily. Thank you very much, audience, for uh, cheering me along as I do this. And of course, I have to sign it because I created it. And Emily is going to get to take this drawing home with her today. Thank you, Emily. And you can come and get this, and get this at the the front of the stage when the presentation is over. So how am I doing on time? About 10 more minutes? All right, well, I want to give you guys a chance to ask me some questions. So we have two microphones set up in either aisle. If you will line up behind both of these microphones, I'm going to go back and forth, so it does not matter which side you're on. Although it looks like currently everyone's in this line. So whoever gets in this line is going to get really lucky really quickly. Um, yes. Ask your question into the microphone as loudly and clearly as you possibly can, and I will do my best to answer it very quickly so that everybody has a chance to ask their question. So, we'll start with you. Um, so, is every single detail in your book smile tr at exactly true? I bet that's everyone's question, huh? You guys can all sit down. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is the most frequently asked question for me, is, is every detail in smile actually true? I like to tell people it's about 98% true. Everything that happens to Reyna actually happened to me. Yes, it did. Um, the only things I changed were a few characters' names. And um, there were actually more people I knew in real life. I knew maybe like 10 people. And I had to make it six because my editors asked me to make it very clear that I was friends with this very small group of people. Um, so, And then a few things were changed because I'm still writing this story. So for example, at the very beginning of Smile, I go to an orthodontist appointment, and they tell me I'm going to get braces. Then I go to a Girl Scout meeting, and then I knock my teeth out. Chances are, I didn't find out I was going to get braces on the same day I actually knocked out my two front teeth. But for the sake of the story, it's more interesting to tell it that way. So that was a good question. Thank you. Next side. I'm a big kid, and this is my first time uh, in getting interested in cartoons and graphic novels. Awesome. Can you give me your elevator speech on how, wh why they're so, so great to start to read? Why are comics so great? Oh, my gosh. Um, uh, I, I love comics in general, but I mean, well, not in, you know. I, I, I mean, I, I guess that's kind of historical, really. The, the way I got into comics was because I started reading them in the newspaper. And for me, that was the San Francisco Chronicle, because I grew up in San Francisco. And the first comic strip I fell in love in with was Calvin and Hobbes. And yeah. And the second comic strip I fell in love with was For Better or For Worse. And then it was Foxtrot, Farside, Dennis the Menace, uh, Bizarro, Luann. The list goes on. If it was in the comics page, I read it and I loved it. And it was only a matter of time before I wanted to make my own. And for me, comics are just a really powerful storytelling medium. You can tell funny stories. You can tell silly stories, but you can also tell sad stories and very moving stories. Um, there's a comic called Mouse, which is a telling of the Holocaust by way of making the uh, Jews mice and the Nazis cats. And it's extremely poignant. It won a Pulitzer Prize. Um, there's a comic called Persepolis, which is about the Iranian Revolution. Um, and I really gravitate towards historical comics for some reason, because I think true stories are absolutely fascinating. But I also like fantasy comics, and I also like, you know, comic strips about families, and I like just about everything in comics. So I don't know if that answers your question, but it's why I'm passionate about them. So on this side... Did your two friends really pull down your skirt? Well, that kind of fits in with the last question, which is, is everything in Smile true? <laughs> yes, my friends really did pull off my skirt in oh. front of the entire courtyard when I was a freshman in high school. Oh. So I dumped those friends. <laughs> and I'm a much better person because of it. Yes, on this side. Um, so when did you, was there anything else that inspired you to start drawing and writing graphic novels? Um, I was inspired by 
almost everything that I read and consumed. I mean, I started drawing because I thought it was fun, and I kept drawing because I really liked cartoons and animation. So I loved Disney movies, I loved TV cartoons like the Smurfs and Scooby Doo, um, and I just tried to like copy my favorite characters. And when I got a little bit older, I started reading alternative comics. And then when I was in college, I read Bone for the first time. And I was just like, I have to make graphic novels. They're so fun. Uh, the list really goes on and on. Everything I've ever read inspires me. Yes. What do you think your next book will be called? What do I think Annabelle. my next book will, The one about me and my sister? Um, or just any graphic novel. I don't tend to come up with the titles first. I tend to come up with the stories first. And I'm still so at the beginning of my next project that I actually don't know what it's going to be called yet. But wow, what is it about? It's about me and my sister. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it'd be called Sisters. I don't know. <laughs> Over here. Um, is the next book going to be uh, True Like Smile? Is it? I'm sorry, can you is say Is it going to be like True? Um, is the next story going to be True Like Smile? If it's about my life, then most likely it will be True. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Hi. Um, what were the best and worst parts of what you, what happened in Smile? The best and worst parts of what happened to me in Smile. So, like, for me, the, the best things in the story. Um, well, the worst is probably knocking out my two front teeth. So, luckily, we get the worst part out of the way at the very beginning of the story. And I think the best part is meeting my best friend, Teresa, at the end of the book. And she's still my best friend to this day. And I'm, like, getting emotional thinking about it. And she's awesome. So, uh, yeah, and I, st I still think that's one of the best things that happened to me in my life was meeting my best friend. Thank you. Sure. Um, Hi. Who's your favorite author and or illustrator? Wow. There are, there are a lot of favorite authors and illustrators, but... My favorite book is Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim by Robert C. O'Brien. Um, and I have a lot of favorite cartoonists, but I also love illustrators too. I mean, I love Norman Rockwell. I love a guy named Ernie Hergenroder who no one's ever heard of. Um, I love the cartoonists like Bill Watterson who drew Calvin and Hobbes and Lynn Johnson who did For Better or For Worse. Um, yeah, I'm like blanking right now, but I, I just went to the portrait gallery this morning and had a really great time looking at paintings. So just like all art I see becomes part of who I am. Hi. How old were you, how old were you when you did your first comic? How old was I when I did my first comic? That's a great question. Um, I started making comics when I was about 10 or 11, but I did not start writing comics professionally until I was 28. But I was doing comics for myself all through that time. So I was first published when I was 28. So 17 years between <laughs> the beginning and the real thing. Were the names of all the people in the book like their actual names? Uh, so in Smile, were all of the characters' names real names? Yeah. No, they were not. Um, the ones who do have their real names are Melissa, Emily, Kelly, and Jenny, and the rest Oh, and Teresa, sorry. And everybody else is a fake name. <laughs> Except me and my family. We're, we're all our real names. Hi. What's your favorite book that you wrote? My favorite book that I wrote, it's kind of like choosing your favorite child, which is to say that it's very difficult. But um, I've had a pretty nice career so far, but I think my two favorites are Smile and Drama, if I had to choose. Hi. What's your most successful? successful book you have ever wrote? What is my most successful book? To date, it is Smile. Um, as a matter of fact, the current New York Times bestseller list for graphic books, paperbacks, Smile is number one and Drama is number two. So, <laughs> it's one of the coolest honors you can have as an author, believe me. Hi. Do you think in pictures? I do think in pictures. In fact, when I do my writing, it looks exactly like this. It's really hard for me to separate the words in the pictures. And when I'm lying in bed at night, unable to sleep and thinking about stories, I'm usually thinking about how they look. And then the characters start to talk. So first it's pictures and then it's words for me. OK. <laughs> Thank you. In the book Smile, you went to the gum doctor. Can you, ex can you like describe that experience? She wants me to describe my trip to the periodontist, which is a gum doctor which is a thing I hope most of you never have to visit. 
Basically, when you knock your two front teeth out, there is gum damage as well as tooth damage. And so the gum doctor's job is to make sure your gums are healthy. And your gums aren't just what covers your teeth. It's all up inside of them, too. So I visited the periodontist, and he gave me something called a scaling, which is where they take a very sharp metal implement and ram it up inside your gums. I'm sorry, the bathrooms are to the sides for those of you that need a, an exit strategy. Um, it is extremely painful, extremely bloody, and will leave you bruised, and it is disgusting. And they did not give me enough Novocaine before they started, so I felt the whole thing. And that was when I passed out at the dentist's office. Yay! <laughs> Hi. Um, what was your favorite character in Smile? Well, it's going to sound really uh, narcissistic to say this, but I think my favorite character in Smile is probably Reyna. She is kind of the main character. Actually, I, I really like my sister's character, even though she's not in Smile very much. She's a really, like, grumpy character. She's always angry about something, and I was always like, yay, happiness. So um, the two of us together are a very interesting combination. I think that's why I want to write a book about the two of us together. Thank you. Sure. What um, helped you uh, get better at art and drawing? What helped me get better games? at art? Well, I took a lot of art classes when I was about you guys' age. Uh, I, took, I took art classes in elementary school. I took them in middle school. I took painting classes on the weekends, all sorts of stuff like that. And um, when I was in high school, I didn't take art classes, which is really strange. But um, I did take theater, and I took choir, and I took journalism. And I managed to work my art into all of those things in one way or another, like drawing comics for the school newspaper. So uh, then I decided to go to college for art. I went to the School of Visual Arts, which is a college in New York City, and they have an illustration program and a cartooning program there. So that seemed perfect for me. So I studied illustration and cartooning in college. Besides that, I've just drawn pretty much every day for my entire life. So you practice a lot, and you do get better at it. So one more? OK, one more question. And it's you. How many years have you been writing for since you started writing? Since I started writing, well, like I said, I started making comics around age 11, but I liked to write from the moment I learned to write. I learned to read and write when I was five, and I just thought it was like the coolest thing I had ever learned to do in my life. It was like I could now tell stories. So um, I didn't really start writing seriously until I was in my late teens, and then I didn't start writing professionally until... Gosh, I was, I was 28 when I started writing professionally. And before that, I thought I wasn't going to be able to do it. I thought, I'm a good artist, but I'm not a good writer. But I started writing my own stories and the stories that were about my life. And that turned me into a better writer. So anybody who wants to write and draw, practice, do tons of it, take any opportunity that you can take, and have a good time. That's the most important thing about being creative. So thank you guys all so much for coming. And Emily, mom is yours. Um, and you guys, I have to let you know that I'm not going to be signing books now, but I will be signing later at 4.30 at the signing area. So I can't sign books right now, but I will if you come and see me in my line. Is that okay? Okay, cool. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.